Hey, I'm Ruben. I'm a geek. I'm a technologist. And I'm passionate about end-user computing. This part is all about Nutanix Frame. Frame's superpower is simple. Like simple. Desktop as a service made simple. It's an art we master, hiding complexity for users and administrators. Of course, every vendor will say, hey, we're simple to use, we're easy to consume, blah de blah de blah But I really challenge you to get through the hype and test it yourself. See it in action. And that's what we'll do. I prepared a lot of demos to see Frame in action. I'm convinced Frame is different in many, many ways. And the best way to show it is in action. So here we go. Let's go. I've prepared 10 different demos to see Frame in action from a an user and from an administrator perspective. Number one, you will see multi-cloud deployment in action. You will learn how easy and fast it is to deploy eight frame accounts in six different continents using Nutanix HV, Azure, Amazon, and Google infrastructure to support a global workforce and leveraging on-premises and public cloud resources for workload VMs. The infrastructure subscription is already set up. Pretty straightforward, easy to do, um, boring to demo. <laughs> so um, that's already done and the demo starts from there. All right, starting with the first frame account. This one is using Azure region West Europe. There are different networking options frame supports. One of them is with private networking. It means the virtual machines, the workload machines will get a private IP address. And to access these machines, we'll use an SDA, a streaming gateway appliance. SDA, SDA some community friends call it secure gateway appliance, but it's a, it's a reverse proxy for the frame remote and protocol. Setup and deployment, what you just saw, is done fully automatically. Multiple SDAs are being deployed, including certificates and including renewal of certificates. Alrighty, next one, Azure West US. This, this uh, frame account will be configured as a persistent desktop. Frame is able to support persistent and non-persistent. Persistent, different name, could be personal, like personal desktops. Uh, and Frame also supports pooled desktops and published applications. Up next is a machine on Google, high performance computing machine. This machine ha will have four NVIDIA T4 GPUs, an awesome machine for real-time ray tracing and high performance end user computing. Up next, Google account in Australia. Beautiful, Sydney. 2019, we'll use that OS as the base OS for the sandbox and we use a Pro 16 machine. And Pro machines is just a name. Pro machines are professional workstations like a MacBook Pro. These instances contain a GPU or maybe a vGPU. Righty, next one, making progress here, great. Next one will be AWS in Tokyo, and we'll use a Linux guest OS. Frame is able to support Windows and Linux guest OSs. In this example, we'll use Ubuntu and Ubuntu on AWS. And finally, the last Frame account is using, using Nutanix AHV as infrastructure platform. This AHV cluster is equipped with NVIDIA GPUs, Tesla GPUs and using grid software um, able to deliver vGPU technology, virtual GPU technology, slicing of GPU technology. Okay, this is it. Done. Within four minutes, eight frame accounts, six continents. Done. Check. Next. In the second demo, you'll see the frame gas agent auto update feature in action. A short demo. Here we go. Just power up the, sa the sandbox. Frame gas agent will communicate to the control plane. New version detected. Yep, detected. Bloop. New version. Done. Next. Good to go. Easy. Frame Enterprise Profiles is using Profile Disk technology. 
Each user profile is stored in a profile disk and this disk will be attached at logon and detached at logoff. Configuration is easy as flip the switch. No file shares required, no configuration, just enable and the profiles are stored on the same storage platform as the VMs are. Friends don't let friends use roaming profiles and folder redirection in 2020. There are great alternatives, including frame enterprise profiles, to solve the challenges around large user profiles. Number four, we'll use one master machine, we call it Sandbox, with many applications installed. And we'll hide these applications for different user groups. These groups of users, sales and designers in this example, only will have access to their own applications. Central image management, single frame account with multiple instances, all within the same account. Simple to set up, easy to main, action, let's go. This is the admin part of the fourth demo, showcasing the installed applications. These apps are installed in the sandbox, can be done manually, can be done automatically with the tools and processes used today. I've installed Office, Adobe software, Autodesk software, Blender, and we use Microsoft masking technology to hide these applications. We'll create different rules and attach different user groups to these rules. This is the end user part of the demo. First, designers will log in. You will see that designer apps are available on the workstation machine, the Pro machine. This machine does have an NVIDIA GPU and enough CPU and memory resources to run all the designer applications. Yep, GPU, NVIDIA, GRID, T4, 2Q profile, good to go. No Office, Adobe, Autodesk, Blender, check, all available. And you can see the shortcuts here as well. Second, the sales user will log in. No designer application will be available, not, not visible. Only sales applications, in this example, it will be Office, is available. This group of users will use the Frame Launchpad and the Cloud PC They're using Air or Edge instances, so no GPUs will be used here. All Office, let's go to Explorer, only Office, no Adobe, no Blender, no Autodesk, no GPU. And again, still using the same master machine with all the apps installed in the same frame account, leveraging multiple instance types in the same frame account to support sales and designer use cases. Awesome, great. The fifth demo is great. We'll create frame powered Windows applications running as progressive web applications. All done with a couple of clicks. These progressive web applications will follow the user while roaming from device to device. And progressive web applications will have the ability to dock directly in Windows start menu on Google shelf. So no need to use a frame launchpad. Also, the identity provider configured ensures single sign-on for the best user experience. We'll just add a couple of progressive web applications here, four in total. Adobe, well, Excel and Power BI. Um, I fast forwarded that, that demo a little bit. Um, no need to wait on that, but you will see like the fourth one, Inventor being added here as well. So four apps are being sort of uh, installed on this machine, in this case manually. Uh, it's also possible to download a zip file so that you can use tools to sort of push these progressive web applications to your devices through management tools. All right, let's launch an application, Inventor in this example. Easy, yeah? Good. Yep, running high-end graphics application, leveraging frame remote and protocol, all running in a progressive web application with a couple of clicks. Easy, cool, awesome. Alrighty, number six, 
This demo is about progressive web applications running on my Google Pixelbook. The progressive web applications are attached at, at the user. They follow me when I roam from device to device. The application will be pinned to the Google shelf. In this example, this is user driven, but of course this can also be controlled by the IT department, leveraging modern device management tools. All right, let's launch some progressive web applications on my Google Chromebook. Beautiful, easy, simple, done, cool. <laughs> Lucky number seven. What if you want to bring frame powered Windows applications to your own HTML5 interface? Maybe Office 365 application launcher, Citrix Workspace, VMware Workspace ONE, Workspace 365, or any workspace aggregator. With a couple of clicks, you can create launch links and use these URLs, including identity integration with your own HTML5 interface. Right now we'll use Workspace 365 and I want to add an additional frame powered Windows application to the already configured seven apps. I go to the frame account. I add the application I want to add to my launchpad. I click on the three dots, click on advanced integration, select the already configured IDP. In this example, the same IDP as I use for Workspace 365. Select the application and click on the copy launch link. Now go to Workspace 365, add a new application, add a new link, customize that link with a nice icon, a friendly name, Yep. <laughs> no typo, no. And add the URL which was just generated in the frame account. Yep, add it, save, done. Simple, huh? Now you can launch applications, hence the name launch link, straight, fr straight from any HTML5 interface. So no need to use the frame launchpad or PWA just straight from, in this example, Workspace 365. Yep, frame powered application, running from a browser, run any application in a browser, including high-end graphics, resource intensive applications, all aggregated into the Workspace aggregator. Demo number eight, we're making progress. This demo is all about thin clients and frame. And what you see here is Agile Edge OS with Frame App for Linux in action. Frame app for Linux or Windows or Mac is using a browser engine, Chromium, wrapped into our own application. All the frame remote and protocol developments and the frame platform developments apply to the frame app as well. It's a browser engine, great. Frame app will unlock functionality the browser is limited to do. For instance, smart card support or best user experience in a multi-monitor setup. I'm running all kinds of applications inside my frame session. You saw Silverlight, now you see Power BI Desktop. And I did set up my frame session on this Agile OS. I'm based in the Netherlands, that's where this machine is running. And this environment is running all kinds of apps. Right now you see Revit. The machine is a like, workstation, a cloud workstation machine, including a GPU. So I can run this and also some other applications. All right, let's run a uh, DirectX application. Run any application in a browser or a browser engine is what you see here in action. This application is rendering at 1700 frames per second on the server side. And on the client side, it will uh, receive roughly 60 frames per second. And we are really sort of stressing the frame remoting protocol here. Why? Because this machine is running in Singapore more than 200 milliseconds away from where I am based in Netherlands. Frame remote and protocol works really well in LAN and WAN environments. And that's what you see here in action. Demo number nine is fun. Run any application in a browser, MSIX, retro and remastered. We'll use MSIX technology to deploy and access a real old application. This application is delivered via our partner, AppCure. And normally it's very, very tough to run in a modern Win 10 environment. Who remembers this great game? I did spend quite some time playing this game in the earlier Windows XP uh, days. Love it. This one as well.
Mission loaded. Acknowledge. Reconstruction options. Building. Ready and waiting. At once. Construction complete. Reconstruction options. Ready and waiting. Agreed. Battle control terminated. Oh, wow, great. I did spend so much time with both games and also preparing this uh, gig fest. It was really fun. Gone are the days of traveling. Somewhere in time, we will be able to fly again. Meanwhile, some people in the community really do everything to bring back these memories. Including playing Microsoft Flight Simulator in a desktop as a service environment. Skip Hall Tower, Docker Alpha Sierra, X-Ray Golf Sierra Alpha at runway 27, ready for takeoff west departure. Air Alpha Sierra, X-Ray Golf Sierra Alpha cleared for takeoff runway 27, west departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 27, Docker Golf Sierra Alpha. Demo number 10 is a combination of frame app for Windows and special peripherals connected inside the frame session, such as the 3D connection space mouse. You see that I'm connecting the space mouse here inside my session, and now I'm controlling the space mouse. And you can see that inside my session, this, uh, this application, this object is, uh, is using the space mouse. I'm not super experienced in controlling the space mouse, but um, yeah, it works, good stuff. Unlock new use cases. Check. Done. Simple. That was fun. 10 demos in 20 minutes. Cool to see powerful, simple, unique, great examples of frame in action with great admin and user experience. But there's one more thing. Remember we deployed an, uh, a beefy machine with 240 gigabyte of RAM, 64 CPUs, 4 NVIDIA T4 GPUs, which contains 10,000 GPU cores and 64 gigs for video RAM. What can you do with this beast? Any examples? Well, all about this. Finally, there's an instance where you can run Teams and Chrome simultaneously. Yay, mission accomplished. A quick overview of the demos. Always fun to see the achievement. Nice, great success. You've seen how desktop as a service can be simple and powerful with great user and admin experience. If you want to experience Frame yourself, you can go to nutanix.com frame and sign up for the trial or use a test drive to see Frame in action yourself. Thanks for being part of GeekFest. Thanks for joining. See you next time.